morning. We want to uh, don't forget that uh, this morning we will go um, our loose offering this morning will go to assist two evangelists that have battled COVID in the past few weeks. We uh, we will be assisting Brother Michael Ball and Brother Danny Bird. We ask that you give sacrificially to help bless these families. Also, don't forget upper room this evening at 5:30. Uh, Remember, it's prayer time on Sunday evenings at 5.30 in the upper room and participate if you can. We'll be having prayer meeting here at church. That's Monday at 7 p.m. and everyone is encouraged to participate. Don't forget the baby bottle fundraiser for the Coastal Pregnancy Center. Please take a bottle and fill it with coins, cash, or check. All checks need to be made payable to the Coastal Pregnancy Center. If you have any questions, see Sister Yvonne. And she did want me to tell you that that has been extended to uh, turn in by October the 3rd, which I think is the first Sunday in October. We do have some bottles left out there. I think her goal was to fill 100 of them. So please, if you've not taken one or two, take them and let's get these bottles filled. For uh, This is a great ministry. Also, our pastor appreciation activities scheduled for today have been postponed. We will let you know the date once we have rescheduled it. And Snow Branch Camp Meeting was also postponed. Oh postponed so we will uh let you know when that is rescheduled now um sister Jeannie has a presentation that she would like to make it this time okay sister kim do you mind stepping up front <laughs> i know you don't like to be put center of attention but Sometimes you have to do stuff you don't want to do. <laughs> and uh, first of all, you know how much we love you. And on, on behalf of the ladies of the church, we'd like to present you this uh, bouquet of roses. <laughs> okay. They're, they're kind of heavy, so Christy's up there to help you hold them. And, uh, <laughs> now, I will tell you, there were 50 roses and all, but two of them accidentally got broken when they were being arranged. And also, there are 48 now, but those 50, <laughs> those 50 roses, they're a, a token of our appreciation for everything you do, not only from the little people to, to the old people and all. You just go beyond the call of duty yes. to do things for us, and we want you to know that we appreciate it. Yes. And also... For those of you who don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, don't know, not tomorrow, but next Monday, Sister Kim marks a milestone in her birthday. She'll be 50 years old. <laughs> and we know she doesn't look like 50 years. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, so those roses represent 50 years, celebrating 50 years of God's grace with you and all. So anyway, we, we know that we had to postpone pastor's appreciation, but you know, when women get something in their mind, they want to do it right then. And also we wanted to go ahead and do that. And we gave them to you early for your birthday. So every day this week, as your 50 years approach, you can, it'll maybe it'll brighten your day. We love you. <laughs> Bye. God bless her. We do love her and appreciate her. Give her a round of applause again. Praise God. We are so blessed. Somebody pick up the phone. We are so blessed in this house to have this pastor and his wife over us, shepherding us, knowing that God placed them right here where they're supposed to be for such a time as this. Glory to God. I'm excited about what God's going to do in this body and everybody throughout the nations of the world. I don't know if you're looking up, but if you're not, you need to start looking up for our redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are the righteous. If you're blood-bought and you're purchased, you are 
are the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord, he is that strong tower and the righteous run into him. Hallelujah. And they shall be saved. They shall be healed. They shall be delivered in the name of Jesus. Don't you ever let what you hear in this world, what you see with your eyes, change the truth that is in your heart forever. It will not change. Our faith should never change because his word changes not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we're going to present these prayer requests knowing that his word changes not. Glory to God. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer, our deliverer this morning. Hallelujah. So don't come and let these prayer requests bring you down in despair, but let them bring you up that we're going to see his power and his glory revealed in these last days. Hallelujah. We want to lift up Melanie Cash. This is a, a close friend of Sister Kim's. She she is in the hospital. She is on a ventilator. They are going to try to get, um, wean her back some today. So we're going to expect that praise report. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We also want to lift up Brother Brad. He is also in the hospital, not on a ventilator. He is improving. His oxygen saturations are staying at a higher level. So prayer changes things. Amen. Remember him. Pray fervently that the blood of Jesus will wash away every affliction of COVID that's in the bodies of these people, our people, God's people, the righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, those boys, Statler and Walker, the sweet boys, I tell you what, you watch their post on Facebook and you can just see the faith in their, in their words. You can feel it and you know that they're going to see uh, uh, something that's going to change their life, that's going to make a pivotal moment in their life because they're going to see God's hand at work in their own family and it will make a difference. Praise God. We want to lift up. Sister Tammy says, remember her husband, Ray. He has back problems and also for, is it Elijah? Elgin, for Elgin and Julie Wallace, they are both in the Beaufort County Hospital with COVID. They're both in critical condition. We're going to cover them with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Also, Brother Fred says, remember his grandson, Little Russ, Little Russ Squires. He has second and third degree burns. Um, I believe he is in Chapel Hill. Is that correct, brother? i got to find you. i got my glasses. I can't see out here. Yes, he is in Chapel Hill. Um, he's going to be receiving some grafts this coming week, but just pray for him that everything will go good and the hand of God will be evidenced upon his body as well. Um, Sister Ann Harris says, remember Cindy Courtney is having a lung biopsy on Tuesday. They are suspecting cancer, but we're going to change that report this morning. Hallelujah. Sister Kim, again, that was for Sister Melanie Cash. Um, Nelk Toller, remember her cousin Larry Hodges? He had a massive heart attack. His mom has a decision to make, and so we want to remember that mom concerning her, um, her son and, and this decision. We want to see God move. We want to see God change that situation for the better, for the glory of his name. And also remember Sister Nell and her family with the loss of her brother um, unexpectedly. So remember that family and lift them up in your prayers. And also Tina Whitley, she lost her brother, so let's remember that family in our prayers as well. I know this has been lengthy, but you know what? Given God these prayer requests is a form of worship. It's a form of faith, and we're going to leave them in his hands, and we're going to expect to see great and mighty things. If you have any needs that you'd like to raise your hand to represent this morning, praise God. Let's go to the Lord sister in praise. Yes, yes, I please. want to testify. Where are you at, sister? Go ahead. Um, I just <laughs> want to thank the Lord. Yes. I, I thank you all for praying for Adeline. Continue Glory to pray to for God. her. She has some other, you know, things with her um, feet and all, but God's going to take care of that yes, too, I know, but she went to the orthopedic surgeon for scoliosis, and, you know, a while back they had given her a brace, but they did, the brace was not made correctly, and she couldn't wear it, it made her fall when she tried to walk, and so she hadn't been wearing it, and I, evidently the surgeon forgot that when they, she went the other day, and, and he's like, so she's been wearing her brace, and Jessica's like, well, no, you know, and she explained Come again, you know, and they did the x-ray, and he said, well, her back has improved, Yes. And uh, and Chad said he could really tell because there was a, a you know a significant curvature there and now it's more kind of you know more the the S is more lengthened out and and you know the doctor's like her he said I can't you can't even take you know in other words you can't even tell he said her shoulders are even Praise God, and yes. you know that is nothing but God because there That's was not right. a back brace That's there was right. not it, it was God yes. you know. 
And I just give God all the Thank praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And he Hallelujah. said, you don't have to, she doesn't have to come back for nine months. And he said, you know, if, you know, and, you know, if that's good, it'll be now just every year, just check up. So I just give God yes. all the praise. Yes, <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go with praise and worship into the presence of God this morning. Praise you, Amen. Let's stand this morning in the house of God. Hallelujah. My faith has been risen this morning. How about yours? Let's join our faith together. Hallelujah. Let's come against the powers of hell and, uh, and the darkness that's trying to push us down. Because, you know, I know how this story ends. We win. I don't care what comes our way, we're still winners, hallelujah. Oh God, we come before you this day. God, we praise you. God, for what we feel in our heart right now. God, we praise you. Dear God, for your, your anointing that's on this service. Dear God, we praise you, Father, for the, for the praise reports. And God, for knowing that you're working. God, we praise you for the improvement, oh God, in these COVID cases. Dear God, we just come before you right now. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over all these uh, uh, these requests that have been given in. Father, you know those that are so sick. God, those that are so beaten down, Father. God, those that are uh, have been walked on by the powers of hell and by Satan himself. Dear God, this morning we surround these, oh God, with your love, with your mercy, God, with your spirit. God, with your healing power, dear God, we release it in the name of Jesus Christ right now. And Father, we command that the powers of hell be pushed back this morning, oh God. Father, that this, uh, this very congregation and their families will be surrounded, oh God. Father, with your hedge of protection, dear God, we just pray for a mighty move, oh God, in this service today. Dear God, that needs to be met, lives will be changed, backsliders will come home. Dear God, and if there's one lost, dear God, in our midst today, that they will find their way to an old-fashioned altar of prayer. Dear God, we pray for an anointing on every facet of this service, God, that you will receive the honor and the glory. God, show us your glory today, we pray, Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, we ask it, Father, and we praise you. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Please remain standing and worship with us.
standing on the promises of God. Amen. You might be seated. He 
aren't you glad that we have been reconciled back to the Father and we can know that he calls us friend. Hallelujah. We want to uh, take the tithes and offering to receive the tithes and offering this morning. And uh, if you didn't catch it a while ago when Brother Larry was making a request, the loose offering or specially designated for that cause will go to help support uh, two of our state evangelists that have been overtaken with COVID or had the COVID, should I say, not overtaken. They were victorious through it, but they had to cancel revivals, and so we want to help support them this morning in that loss of income that they had during that period of time. So that's what the loose offering will go to, or if you make a special designation for that. Uh, the other des designated offering will go as according to how you have it marked on your envelope. So if it's ties, it will go to the church. So uh, please stand with me this morning, and we will pray a blessing on this offering. And at the conclusion of the prayer, the music will start. If you'll just come forward and put your offering in the blue baskets at front, or there's one at the back if that's closer and easier for you. Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to give in this offering today. Dear God, we thank you that we have been blessed, Father. God, with, with health and with a sound mind. Dear God, that we have the ability to earn an income, oh God, support our families. And dear God, we give back to you, Father, this morning, that portion that is yours. And dear God, we give it freely and, and, and willingly, oh God. And Father, we just pray that this offering will go forward, oh God, to further your kingdom. Dear God, that the blessings of God will be known abroad and blessings will come into people's lives through this offering. Dear God, we pray for special blessings upon the, the two evangelists, oh God, as we help support them this morning. And dear God, we just praise you, God, for the work that you've done in their lives. God, miracles were performed, oh God, while they were going through COVID. And Father, we thank you for that this morning. God, bless this congregation as they give. God, we just pray that you would uh, just bring blessings upon them, oh God. Open the windows of heaven and rain down upon them, oh God, blessings that they're unable to receive. God, we thank you for all that you've done. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Sister Ellen is going to bless us this morning. I asked her to sing this morning a, a, a special song that I requested. Uh, I was riding down the road one day this week, and all these troubles and trials, and there are people in the hospitals, and it's just, it got to me. But the thought came to me, regardless of what we're facing, Jesus is still the answer. Hallelujah. Some men try so hard to find that God's not really real, while others say they know for sure. His love you cannot feel, but I know he's real within my soul, for one day he cleansed and he made me whole. 
Jesus is still the answer. And though time and ages roll, Jesus is still the answer. He's the answer for your soul. And though some may say he doesn't fit with their philosophy, I know Jesus is still the answer. He's always been and he always will be. Some men pretend that things of this world have brought them peace of mind. But with the dawn of each new day, new thrills they try to find. Not until they meet the prince of peace can they ever hope to find relief yes Jesus is still the answer for a world that's seeking for peace Jesus is still the answer and though time and ages roll. Jesus is still the answer. He's the answer for your soul. And though some may say he doesn't fit with them, If you'll stand this morning, hallelujah. It's our opportunity now as a group to come together, thinking on those words and just singing and giving God all the glory and praise to his name. Through the good and times and the challenges of life, he still deserves the glory and praise this morning. And we come to him in faith believing that he's a God that will keep us. He's faithful and he's done great mighty things. And we're going to worship him today. Deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory oh, and the honor.
church come on church lift your hands lift your hands and your voices this morning oh you're wonderful Lord this morning we worship you God come on lift your voice this morning and magnify the great God of heaven oh we worship you Lord this morning God we honor you Lord you are great oh you do miracles so great there is no one else like nobody you. like you, God. No, there is no one else like you, Lord. You are great. Tell him, church. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Your voices just begin to lift up the name of the Lord in this place. Let's pray to the God of heaven for miracles this morning. We, we got some people need a touch this morning. We got people, Lord, all over the all over the world, all over Eastern North Carolina, in the hospitals, preachers and ministers and our folk, amen, and 
folk all over and churches all over that need a touch from God. We just declare with the words of our mouth that God, you're great and you do miracles so great. There is nobody else like you, God. We are the people of God and we declare the word of God this morning. Oh, we worship you, Lord, in this place this morning. Great God in heaven, I feel his presence this morning. Oh, I feel a stirring in this place this morning. Oh, we worship you this morning. Come on, let's just give him honor and glory just a moment. Just for a few moments this morning. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, stir the waters. Stir the waters this morning. Oh, God, why don't you call Brad Caden's name out right now? God, you're the God of miracles. Touch Brad Caden right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we're, we're his body of believers. We're his brothers and sisters. Oh, great God, we're going to call on you this morning. Oh, God, touch that man. Oh, God, this morning. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Oh, if I can just get a hold of the horns of the altar this morning. If I can just approach the throne of grace this morning. For whatever our need is this morning, God delights to answer prayers. God, I'm so thankful that when we speak, God, you hear us. Your ears not heavy, your arms not short. You're the great God, Jehovah, that rules and reigns and sovereign. Looks down upon this earth, sit upon, sitteth upon the circle of the earth. The Bible declares this morning, is there anything too hard for you, God? For with God, nothing is impossible. Let faith arise. Calm our fears, Lord, calm our storms this morning. God, do a deep work here this morning. The lives of every person, every person. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. you remain standing for the reading of the word this morning. Thank you. Dear God, great God in heaven, I believe God for the wayward child to come home this morning, for the prodigal son to be restored. I believe in God for a great outpouring of His Spirit. I believe in God for healing and miracles for people that we are praying for and we'll pray for today. I'm praying for faith to rise up in this place. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. The Bible said, be careful for nothing. Now, uh, probably a better rendering for us, the way we speak, different translations would say, don't be anxious about anything. That's what it's saying. But in everything, by prayer 
and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. In verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we feel your presence. You have anointed this service. And God, you don't pour out your anointing and you don't touch your people randomly. There's always a specific purpose. And Lord, whatever that purpose is today, let it be accomplished. Send your word out and heal those that are sick that we've named out in our prayer request. Lord, change hearts and minds in this place. God, we didn't come here simply to be stirred. Thank you for stirring. We didn't come, Lord God, just to simply feel your presence. Thank you for your presence. But we've come to be changed by a mighty God. Lord, now anoint me, God, your servant to preach. God, I'm nothing without you. Absolutely nothing without your help. God, I pray for your people this morning. God, open hearts and minds as we always pray. Let them receive. God, let us have not just simply a sermon this morning, simply a message, but we need a word from you, God, this morning. And the people said, Amen and Amen. May God bless you. Thank you to all of you for worshiping the Lord and being in his prayer. Isn't God good to his people? Amen. How many of you are glad to be back in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. You know, we, we did have to cancel last week, and, I mean, you know, we, we probably could have uh, gone a different route, and, we you know, I tell people if we're going to make a decision to cancel a service, we're doing it out of the abundance of caution. And if we're going to make a mistake, we're going to make it on the side of caution. And we want you to know that if we cancel a service, it's not because uh, the main reason is we're trying to keep everybody safe, and we love you, and that's why we're doing it. And we, you know, and somebody said, well, you know, if I was, if I was you, I'd do this. Well, why, well, you give me a call. I need all the help I can get. Amen. And I appreciate all the advice and the feedback that we can get. And uh, we are still navigating. Everybody knows we're still navigating. I told some of the security team earlier this morning, I said, you know, I got up one morning a month or two ago, was going about the middle of the morning, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, go to the restroom. And, and I, I just thought for a brief second, I said, Lord, is it possible that all this could just be a bad dream? And, of course, it is not. It is our reality that we're living in. And I don't even like to use the word reality because the reality is that we serve a God who is in control. Amen. Hallelujah. He is. Amen. I want to uh, want to greet a, a good friend of mine. He's, he's here today uh, all the way from Henderson, North Carolina. We were blessed, Kimberly and I, we were blessed to be their pastor uh, for a number of years. And, uh his, him and his wife, his wife passed away with cancer back in 2015, and uh, he, God has been faithful to Brother Bill. But Bill Johns is right here on the front row. Would you greet Brother Bill this morning? Amen. Now, I, I, he, I'm not going to give him the mic because he, he's worse than I am, okay? Not, okay? Oh, gosh. But I will say that in my office a while ago, he was talking about things we had been through together in the in 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 the church and all. He said, "Do these people, y'all now, does your church, do they know how blessed they are to have you as a preacher?" I just thought I'd throw that in there. Amen. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I just wanted them to hear that this morning. Amen. I'm gonna preach a little while on in everything. And I want us to say that this morning that, as Brother Kenny was this week, is talking about I have been burdened and I have been discouraged and I have been in anguish of spirit because we have been faced with a number of difficult situations and I have been called, and I know you have for Brad and his family uh, as they battle through uh, Brother Brad being in the hospital bat battling through COVID and the other members of the family are doing much better. I prayed for Sister Ellen and her family as they've gone through what they've had to go through. And we've had others, Sister Annie Norman, who's uh, with the Coastal Pregnancy Center. She's also a minister in the 
Pentecostal Holiness Church. Her husband's in the hospital now uh, battling COVID. And I look around and I see all of this that's going on. And I say, Lord, you're going to have to help us. And how many of you know that he is? How many of you know that God, raise your hand, amen, and, and signify, we know that God is, is going to help us. And we got a call, we, we had a call this week at one of Kimberly's dear friends and Sister Jennifer had mentioned it this morning in prayer request that a dear friend of hers that is also from Henderson, 42, 44 years old, uh, Brother Wayne that's come and sang here uh, for pastor appreciation, a young fellow that sings uh, in, uh, the Jason Crabb song, Through the Fire. His wife is in the hospital on a ventilator right now battling the COVID, battling COVID and battling for her life. And uh, all of these things that are going on as we look around there, and, and, and it's easy now to be anxious. It, it, it doesn't take a lot to get, you know, every time somebody coughs and, or sneezes, now we look at them funny. We do. We, 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 we whoa, whoa, you know, and you go anywhere. And I was at a restaurant the other day, and I admit to doing this, and uh, we sat down in the booth, and uh, the man was hacking behind me, and I looked at the waitress. I said, can we move? You know, it's easy to be anxious in these times. And I did it in a polite way. I didn't want the man to know I was moving because of him. But we, we're living in, in, in a time when there is fear. There is a culture of absolute fear about what tomorrow is going to bring. There is an uneasiness, there is, a, there is an uncertainty, and all of us, I don't care how strong we are in the Lord and how spiritual we are, that every time that we hear about somebody getting COVID and going to the hospital and possibly going on a ventilator, does anybody think, oh God, that might be me? Come on here. And, and, and it's this, this fear is gripping a nation, it is dividing a nation. It is starting even to divide in the churches. Unfortunately, this is what is going on. And see, the presence of anxiety or anxiousness is, is unavoidable. But staying there is an option. And I declare to you this morning that I'm going to believe the report of the Lord no matter what comes. Come on and say amen this morning. The word anxious or anxiety can mean worry. One man said, why pray when I can worry? But I like it, why worry when I can pray? It means unease or a, a certain nervousness. And this is what the Apostle Paul is saying here to the Philippian church. He's saying in verse 6, don't be anxious for anything. In other words, don't worry about nothing. Oh, that's easier said than done. Don't worry. How can I have been texting Brother Wayne uh, and, uh, as his, and, and also Paula and, and, and talking to them and how it's easy for me to say to trust God. But they're in the, they're in the fire right now. And how many of you know that God we serve is still in the fire, amen? He's still in the flames and, and the furnace of affliction, and God knows how to deliver them that belong to him. Somebody help me and say amen. The Bible said don't let anything in your life leave you in this state of anxiety. I know what it's like to face anxiety. I know what it's like to face discouragement and depress and be depressed and, and, and to face these things. And I can tell you that every time that we are anxious and every time there's an anxiety and every time there is an uncertainty about what is going to happen, amen, Paul gives us clear instructions this morning. Don't worry. You know why he can say that? Because he knew that God was in control. And I'm telling you that is something that the church is forgetting in the day and age that we're living in, that God is still in control in the midst of all that is going on. Anxiety comes with life, but it doesn't have to dominate. 
does not have to dominate every facet of our lives. When we begin to think about what Paul is saying here, oh, it's simple, the apostle. Oh, we can, I can hear us, some of us say, oh, Paul, yeah, but you were the great man of God. You were that great apostle, and you walked in authority and in power. Let me tell you something. Every one of us has access to the same God, to the same power, to the same Holy Ghost, to the same cross of Calvary as the apostle Paul had. Amen. How many have I got today that'll say I'm covered by the blood? Amen. Come on now, I'm sanctified. I'm filled with His Spirit. Amen. And I'm still walking. Amen. In faith and in victory. God is sovereign. I love that word. I remind myself all the time. I like, I used to listen to a, when I worked in Elizabeth City, I would drive back and forth every day, and there was a man that always would come on at the end of the day. I look forward to hearing his preaching. And I love I love what he used to say. He used to say, God, you are boss all by yourself. Amen. He don't call nobody and ask them what they think about COVID. He don't call and ask anybody what are they going to do about this or that war or this situation or that sickness or whatever it is you're going through. Can I tell you this morning that the God that we serve, amen, is watching over every one of us to perform his will. Paul wrote these words in a Roman prison. Mm -hmm. He was in prison when he wrote this. Oh, I tell you now, it's easy for me to get behind this pulpit wearing this, that, this suit and, 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 uh, and standing in front of you in a beautiful air-conditioned uh, uh, carpet and padded pews and declaring to you, don't worry about it. Don't be anxious about nothing, y'all. It's easy for me to read it off the screen. It's easy for me to quote it. It's even easy for me to, maybe some of you women could go to Hobby Lobby and buy you one of those nice pretty frames where it's got that up there. Be anxious for nothing. And you can go home and put it on your uh, living room wall. Amen. I can tell you right now, you can name it and you can claim it and you can even frame it. But let me tell you something. God said it like this. Amen. In everything, hallelujah, in everything, I am in control. It might be easy to say it. It might be easy to name it and claim it and frame it. Amen. But it's a whole different thing when you get it here. When you really get it down here, amen, that I'm not going to be anxious about anything. See, it seems impossible to apply this to our lives. Almost. But the great apostle said, don't worry about it. Don't be anxious about nothing. God help me. Somebody say it. God help me. Dear heaven above. I, just as soon as I get through shaking your hands, I'm using hand sanitizer. Come on now. I, uh, you know, when, when people, there was somebody I was talking to the other day, and the, 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 every time he talked to me, he got closer to me, and I kept backing up. If you see me doing this, that means you're getting too close. Come on here. But, uh, you know, what, but Brother Bateman, you're saying don't be anxious about it. I'm not there yet. But I'm asking God to help all of us because we're living in a culture of fear in a society that is scared of its own shadow. And God is looking for a people that'll say, that'll stand up and say, hey, we know in whom we serve. This is the God that we serve. He's got us. He's taking care of us. He's watching over us. That doesn't mean none of us are not going to get sick, dear heaven above. Doesn't mean that we're exempt somehow from all of the things that are going on, amen. But Paul said, don't worry about nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you something, church, and I hope this will help you because it helps me. I've, we've all, anybody, well, I don't, I don't have to ask you to raise your hand. Everybody, every one of us have been through something in our lives that brought so much anxiety you couldn't sleep at night. You're, you're, you're dead dog tired and you lay you, you, you almost fall asleep standing up and the moment that your head hits the pillow, you're laying in your soft bed, your pillows are just right, your covers are perfect, and you're thinking, I am so tired, but you have so much worry and anxiety, your mind instantly starts running. Anybody been there? You get up in the middle of the night, 
and it's right there on your mind. You get up in the morning, and the first thing you think about, it's not a cup of coffee, but it's your problems that you're going through. We've all been there. We've been there. And I'm telling you, and I'm going to help you tonight, that when you get in the presence of God, every affliction, every demonic attack, every situation has got to bow to God because God will let us know in his presence that I am in control. Somebody lift your hand and bless the Lord in his house. How does this happen? Because his spirit, you know, you, I, I can prove it to you just a few minutes ago. You are great. Oh, Lord, I, man, I ready to hit the devil in the headlock. I like it when they stop playing. I'm not going to play it. When they stop playing, we all lift our voice and we're clapping. You are great. You are mighty. Woo! Man, I'm about to jump, shout. Where you at, devil? We feel his presence. There is something about being in the presence of God and knowing his tangible, uh, uh, his immediate presence is in this house. He's ministering to us as we minister to him. You're not even thinking about your problems. You don't even care about your problems. I'm telling you, sickness must bow in the presence of God. COVID must bow in the presence of God. Fear must bow in the presence of It all has to bow when I am in his presence. Anxiety will consume us. It dominates us. It fills us with dread. Hey, listen, I... I'm, t- I'm, not, I'm not minimizing nothing. I, I never will. I, I haven't from the beginning. All of this should awaken the church and worry, worry, not worry, but concern the church of the day and hour that we're living in. These are, these are unsettling times. Think about it. You don't even, I was talking to, talking to a precious woman who's, uh, whose husband is in the hospital with COVID, and they asked her a question. They said, well, where did it come from, who you had contact with? She said, I went to the grocery store. None of us know we're slurking. We have people, and I understand we got a number of people t- today that would be here that they're quarantining or they're, uh, yeah, quarantining. Some obviously are sick. There are people that are, are, are really are still afraid to come back to church. And I'm not minimizing that fear. That fear is palpable. It's real. I understand it. But all I can do, amen, and I get fearful, and I get anxious about it, and I have anxiety about it. But, dear God, I look to the word of the living God, and I hear the apostle say, don't worry about nothing. You say, that's, that's impossible. No, it's not because it's in the word of God. Anybody going to trust God with me tonight? See, when we have anxiety, it causes hope and faith to vanish away. It's a trick of the enemy. You know, I always feel real emboldened when I say, devil, the devil's a liar. And he is. But why is it that we are so quick to believe his lies? I'm sure the devil's told us, all of us in here, that COVID's going to get you. Anybody ever, you know, I used to do this when, when, when back years ago when WebMD, WebMD uh, got real famous and it was online and it was fairly new and you could diagnose yourself. So every time I got a pain, boy, I looked it up and I had 10 or 15, 20 different sicknesses. Come on here. Y'all ain't done it. I know I'm the only one. But, I, you know, after a while, I said, heaven above, amen. I just said, I'm going to quit looking at that. I'm going to quit worrying about that, amen, because it's a, it, uh, the anxiety will call us to believe the lies of the devil. Let me tell you something. The Bible said to teach us to number our days. God's got your life in his hand. Come on and say amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That doesn't mean you can't use common sense and wisdom. Come on. I lived, on, I lived on the Outer Banks, pastor down there for four years. When a hurricane come through, they said evacuate, I evacuated. You say, well, where's your faith? Well, I, I can tell you something. I got faith, but God also give me wisdom. Come on now. Come on here. So if I was on the Outer Banks and a Category 5 storm was going to come through, 
200 mile an hour wind and I'm down there with my family and they say evacuate, I'm going to leave. Come on, church. I still trust God, but God give us wisdom, amen. I'm telling you right now, we got, we got people that are scared to the death of their own shadow, amen, and it's time to stand up and be bold, amen. The wicked flee when nobody chases, but the righteous are as bold as a lion, amen. I know in whom I believe. I believe the report of the Lord, amen. The Bible said don't be anxious about anything, and I underlined anything. That's what it says. The King James said, be careful for nothing or be anxious about nothing, but in everything by prayer. Come on, church. Man, I've been praying this week, y'all. And I pray every week, obviously, but I've been praying. I, get, I wake up in the middle of the night, I start calling out people's names in prayer. God, if you're worried about it, then pray about it. Dear God, we, 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 we sound like they, they, we hear that from the time we're in Sunday school and nursery class. Come on here. If something's worrying you, pray about it. He said, Paul, Paul said, he, he said, don't worry about nothing, but, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanks. Giving, come on and say amen by prayer, by petitioning God. I go out on my back deck, I get me a cup of coffee, and I feel anytime I have felt anxiety rising up in me and fear and doubt about anything, and I'm reminded, oh God, you've already given me peace over that. Come on here. Why am I, I'm not going back there no more. God, you already gave me peace over it. And the peace of God passes all understanding. The world don't understand this, church. He said, but by everything, by prayer and supplication. Listen, prayer, I'm, I'm going to hurry here. I'm not, but I'll tell you I am, amen. Prayer redirects us to God. It gets, the, it gets the, 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 the mind and the anxiety and the fear and the doubt. I'm not, listen, I didn't come to beat nobody up over having fear and doubt. Not a, no, sir. I've been there. No, ma'am, I've been there. But prayer redirects us away from the problem to an all-powerful, sovereign ruler that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Now, when we get ready to close this thing out today, and I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to, Ask, I mean, everybody's going to be you ready to come if you want to. We're going to be, we're going to pray. I want, I want somebody to stand in on, on for Melanie, for Brad. I want somebody to stand in for Annie Norman's husband. And I want us to lay hands on them. And I want us to do it in faith. God, help uh, our faith to be redirected from being so anxious to a God. Come on here. God, we where is, where is the faith of the church at in one of the darkest hours in America? Let me tell you something. I don't have all, all the information ahead of me. I just thought when, when, when the nation was going through the Civil War, the churches turned to God. When brother was fighting against brother and we didn't know what was going to happen, the nation turned to God. During World War I and World War II, when, and when uh, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, immediately the nation, the Christians, turned to God. Somebody said, well, that's just jailhouse religion. Let me tell you something. God will use things to turn us to him. I preached in prisons for nearly uh, 17 years all over eastern North Carolina. A half a dozen or more. I would go in there and I'd, I would meet men who made mistakes in their lives and they turned their lives around. But I'll tell you, and I'm, I'm ashamed to admit this, but every church that I was a, that I uh, pastored and I trained a prison ministry team to go in, we'd go in and we, it was very effective. We saw people come to the Lord. But there was always one or two in the church, oh, they, just, they, they, they get what they deserve. The only reason they're coming to God is because they're in prison. Let me tell you something. God has a way of getting a hold of his people. And I believe, amen, I, I'm not saying that what we're going through is a judgment of God, but I'm beginning to think, amen, that God is using everything that is going around us to call us back one more time to prepare the church for the great rapture of, the, of this people, amen. 
So if you need a little jailhouse religion, I say get it before you leave. God allows this to, if this is concerning you and if you're anxious about this, then in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your petitions known unto God. Lord, take everything that I'm looking to, everything. I'm going to tell you. Now, I, I, I didn't want, plan on saying this, but I'm, I'm going to interject it real quick. Our government now is overreaching again. Come on here. And I, don't, I don't think that it's going to hold up. But if you throw enough stuff against the wall, eventually something's going to stick. And this, we better wake up. I'm, I'm telling you, we better, we better be aware of what is going on. In me. Are you going to worry about it? Nope. I serve a God, I've I seen a God that the Supreme Court has thumbed their nose up and said that gay marriage is now law of the land, but the book says it ain't, amen. I see a Bible, amen, the Word of God, and a nation that has thumbed its nose at, at, at God and said it's okay to take the lives of children in the womb. But I'm telling you here, amen, they can make all the laws they want. They can decree this. He can mandate this. He can say this. But there is still a God in heaven. He's Jehovah. Over God, He rules and reigns, and there is none like Him. God's got it, y'all. He's in control, y'all. Last and certainly not least, it says, "Be careful, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving." You start. You get to be thankful. You see, my wife, she got them roses. She teared all up. Bless her heart. Now, worry, worry not for I will give you thy food and wine. She was thankful. And that's the way God's saying here. That this is not un this is not random. God says, Don't worry about nothing, but by everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. How many of you know we ought to be thankful? In everything. Come on, church. Be thank why? Because God is good. I don't care how bad things got, God is good. Come on, church. It's God good. Give him praise. Oh, so in prayer and in supplication, and I'm thanking you, God. Oh, I'm starting to feel the anxiety and the fear and the doubt, amen. I'm starting to see it move out and inside of me I'm feeling the peace of God that passive all understanding. One more thing. As we pray in His presence, prayer silences the anxious thoughts. It repositions us to hear from Him and it reminds us of this pro promise in verse 7, I'm going to give you one of the most beautiful promises in the Word of God, in the entire Word of God. And we know it's full of promises. All the promises of God are yea and amen. There's so many beautiful. But this is one of the most beautiful promises in the Word of God. After you've prayed and supplication with thanksgiving, made your petitions, your requests known unto God, this is what Paul said. And the peace of God. How many of you need peace? And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds. Come on, right in the midst of all of this. Oh, come on, lift your hands and say, God, I need that peace in my life. Oh, God, this morning. Come on, Sister Ellen, back to this piano, please. Come on, let's, re let's, come on, let's reverence the Lord here just a moment. Lord, the peace of God, let the peace of God flow in this place. Oh, God, give us peace, Lord, that you're, you're sovereign. Lord, let us understand you're on the throne this morning. God, we, you, Lord, you've never abdicated. You've never stepped off for a moment from all eternity. You've been in control. The Word of God said in the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. I heard one preacher a, a while ago, it don't all, only pass all understanding, it passeth all misunderstanding the peace of God listen now you ready the peace of God surpasseth all misinformation all disinformation well I heard 
this one say this. You know, I, like all of you, have done research on the vaccine, trying to find out the, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I have found that I could find a hundred people that would say it's the mark of the beast. I find another hundred people would say that it's the best thing since sliced bread. Come on here. I, you can go, go online, you can find people that say this pandemic is not real. Some will say that it's the end of the world. I'm glad I serve a God that gives me peace, that surpasses all information, all misinformation, and all disinformation. No matter what President Biden decrees, my God still rules. No matter what Governor Kupner says, my God still has the last word. We're not being rebellious. We're not being smart alecky. We're simply standing as you stand this morning. Come on and stand. We're standing on the Word of God. I'm standing on your promises, God, this morning. Come on, bow your heads. Brother Chad and Christy, I want you all to come in and stand for Brad and Michelle. Brother Fred, would you come in, come up here and stand in on behalf of Preston Norman? And we're going to anoint these, and I know we're dealing with that spike in the COVID, and we're trying to be even more careful than we have been. We don't want to get careless. Come on, help me pray, church. If you need that peace that I preached on this morning, don't mean that fear and doubt won't creep in. It don't mean that anxiety and anxiousness won't attack you again. It's part of life, church. There are people that may, may be here that you don't know where the rent's coming from. And you're anxious about that. I, I understand many of us have been there before. Maybe you don't, maybe you're anxious about a relationship or anxious about something on your job. God said this morning through the writings of the great apostle Paul, don't, be, don't worry about nothing, but in everything. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Then this promise, one of the greatest promises in the word of God and the peace of God, that passeth all understanding shall fill your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, if you would, Brother Kenny, will you grab some more? I don't. I'm not going to ask you to come this morning, but if you're one of those this morning, I will ask you this. If you have anxiety and fear and you're nervous, I want you to come to this altar. And ask God to help you this morning. We don't. We were not trying to embarrass you. If you want to stay where you are, but I'm, we're getting ready to pray for Brad, Caden, for Melanie, Cash, and for Preston Norman. They need a miracle from God. I want you to. I want you to join with me. Let's reverence the Lord. No moving around. No leaving. If you don't have to leave, come on. Let's pray. Stretch your hands this way. Come on. Let's believe together.
Come on, church, let's lift our hands and give glory to the God of heaven. To the God of heaven this morning. Oh, God, oh, God, you're able, Lord. Oh, there's no doubt, God, you're able this morning. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Or let me say a couple more things real quickly. If you're praying for a spouse, don't worry about it. But in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your petitions known unto God. If you're praying for unsaved children, don't worry about it. Don't be anxious. How many of you got unsaved children? You need, you need to see God move. You got doubts, fears. I'm here to tell you this morning. I got a word from the Lord for you. Not a prophet, just an old preacher. Don't worry about it. Don't be anxious for nothing. But in everything, come on, church, in everything, in prayer, supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto God and let the peace of God rise up and give it to you and keep your hearts and guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus let's pray Father Lord I've, I've, I've give you word this morning help me to apply it to my heart it's easy to preach it's easy to quote it's easy to tell somebody else I've named it, I've claimed it, I've framed it, God. But God, let it be applied to my life, God. Let it be applied to my life. Now, Father, Lord, we, we're going to lift this service up tonight. I'm asking everybody here, I want you to come back if you can. We're going to have church. We're going to praise Him. We're going to worship Him. We're going to be cautious. But we're going to magnify the God of heaven. Because he's sovereign. Father, as we leave here today, Lord, you watch over us, God. You protect us. You keep us. And you help us, Lord. And we'll be careful to thank you, God. We'll be careful to praise you. We'll thank you, God, for all that you've done. And everybody said amen.